everyone it's Lou Collins today I'm going to do something a little bit different and I'm going to take you through a fabric art journal page from start to finish so this is going to be a much longer video than usual um, obviously when there's drying time and such I will cut that bit down for you I'm going to be working in one of my new art journals these are actually secondhand fabric swatch books I ordered these from eBay they I got them both together for like £10 I won the bid and that's all they are I got plain fabric but I certainly am going to be looking at getting some patterned ones as well so I think some florals will be beautiful so let's take a look at the one that I've already started in I started small now the idea with a fabric journal is that it's pushing me out of my um, usual comfort zone of using paper and cardstock so I have done one page in this already which is just there now with a fabric base obviously things like stamping is very different you're never going to get a clear smooth image you can't really use a great deal of wet mediums your adhesives need to be altered ever so slightly um things like that so it is all very different when it comes to creating the background and i am essentially governed by the base color rather than just starting on a white page so i think i'm going to be working on one of these possibly i'm thinking probably maybe this one i think a, a nice cream color I've also gone with the inspiration of one of these large butterflies that come in the transparent things pack. This is from Tim Holtz. So I'm probably going to use one of these as a focal image. I love this mustard colour, so I think I'm going to bring some of that into this page so that the reverse of the page actually then tones in if you do see it. And when you flick through the book, it's kind of cohesive. But I'm going to bring in that that contrast in colour. Now I do have an entire video on my YouTube channel talking about colours that contrast with um, each other, complementary colours. So they are ones that are pretty much opposite on the colour wheel. So I think I'm going to go, if I'm looking at these sorts of colours, I was going to go with the blues and purples as a contrast, but I'm just going to shift that ever so slightly and come more towards the teals. So they are not quite contrasting or complementary but they're definitely almost opposite certainly one's more cool and one's warm um, and I think they absolutely work together and highlight each other beautifully as I say working with stamps onto fabric particularly as this one is quite textured it makes it a lot harder detailed stamps just aren't going to show up now another thing to mention as well is that the backs of these swatches very often have this more supportive backing and this one is kind of going to stop a lot of the mediums that I'm putting on from soaking through which is great but I need to be aware of this central area where there isn't any uh, backing so maybe pop a piece of plastic or something under there to protect the page underneath if I am going in with a lot of colour that's going to soak into the fabric. So for backing stamps I want something quite bold, I'm thinking some coffee rings there, I've got some dots as well. Now I really love these stamps, I'm not sure the sort of the postmarks, how well they're going to show up on the fabric but we could have a go anyway. So I'll start with a few stamps first of all and just really quite randomly putting them on there as background texture and we'll see how far we get and we'll see whether we think we need any more. I'm going to be using my VersaFine Claire the same way as I would if I was stamping with paper or cardstock so I'm not changing up anything there. Usually with an art journal page I'll do a lot of my stamping using my fingers and just holding the stamp but for this I'm going to be using my block. Now I think I want to put something supportive under there as well because um, the fabric in the centre where the backs are missing kind of dips down a bit and I don't want to just have a line where I'm missing my stamping completely. So I've got a metal shim here, this is from my die cutting machine, putting that in so at least I've got something nice and firm to stamp up against. So the first stamp is going on and it really is trial and error as to how the image will appear on your fabric once you lift off and do you know what that's actually not too bad that's not bad at all I'm going to move my stamp more towards the edge of the block here so that I can get up into the top corner and I'm going to repeat this over on this side but overlapping the edge now, I'm quite happy with that I've got a little bit of a miss spot but that doesn't matter 
I think for this the focal point is going to be in this area. I tend to go towards the bottom left hand corner. Let's switch it up and go towards the right hand corner this time. But there's going to be lots going on in here anyway. So I don't think there'll really be one main focal image or focal part here. Certainly the butterfly is going to be the main area, but there's going to be a lot going on elsewhere on the page too. So I think these postmarks, I can definitely have a go at stamping these with my fingers and see how they go because they really are quite small. Let's just put one in the middle, press that down, be sure not to move it around once it's down, but just press all the detail in. Again, that's really not too bad at all. So let's do another one of those down here. I always think you should do more stamping rather than less because it really is going to get for the most part covered over with other materials, textures, uh, mediums and things like that. I've got a stamp here that says first class mail. Again, absolutely. I know I'm not going to be able to really read this once it's stamped. I can't read it much at all, but it's texture. And let's just go in as well for the time being with the circular postmark as well. And let's overlap some of these. Maybe another one here and one down here. This is an old stamp that I've had for quite a while, so I can't even remember the name of it because I've had it out of its packet for a long, long time. Um, I'll see if I can find it. And I'm just going to stamp that. See, that's really not showing up at all. Let's see if we can get any more from that. A little bit more there, really not a lot. Some, I think some stamps on fabric, you just need to just say, no, that's not going to work. Let's press down a bit harder. Well, that's a little bit better, that one. So let's try again up in that top right-hand corner. Let's go back over where we were. Maybe I didn't put enough ink on there. That's better. Okay, so I've got some great texture on there. I could definitely add more later on, but it's a really nice base to start with. Now, throughout this, I tend to leave an area of white space. And for me at the minute, it's kind of down this centerpiece here. So I'm going to have, as I say, my butterfly is probably going to sit in this area. And what I'll do is anything I put around here, I'll echo up in this corner here and it will stretch a little bit up to the top and round here. So then this area is almost just almost left completely clear. OK, so we've added some detail with the stamp. The next thing to add is texture. And you can absolutely be putting texture paste on a fabric art journal page. So I'm going to be using the Dale Rowney texture paste. Um, this is one I've just had for a long, long time. I'm not too fussed about the colour. Sometimes I am wary of the colour if it's too white, too yellow, too brown. Um, but this I'm going to add colour over the top. And that's part of the reason I actually want the texture paste is because I want to be adding colour over the top and see all those nice creases and cracks and lumps and bumps that we get from texture paste. So I'm going to apply it over in this corner and I'm going to just put a really thick layer on to start with like so taking it right to the edge and it will come off the metal so I don't need to worry about that and I'm going to do the same over in this corner as I say echoing anything I do in one area I will be echoing elsewhere making sure there's some nice texture in there I'm not doing anything too smooth and down the bottom here as well probably bring that up a little bit higher there if you're not sure on the texture, you can always tap your spatula in to give it some peaks. And then I'm just going to go right in to the very top up here. I'm not sure if you can even see that and just drag a little bit down. So you can see already we're starting to cover over quite an amount of the stamping. Just by scraping away a few small areas, I can kind of reveal the stamping through so just here you can see that stamping coming through the texture paste as well let's just add a piece here too just putting it on adding the texture lumps and bumps and then almost scraping away some areas so you can see that black through 
again okay so I'm happy with that for the composition the amount that's there at this point any mixed media project usually looks a little bit of a hot mess so don't worry about that at all what I'm going to do now is uh, apply a heat tool to this to try to dry the paste off or certainly at least put um, a layer on the or a skin on the paste I suppose with some warmth start that drying process so that I can add mediums over the top now you definitely want to have something a barrier between this page and the next one and maybe even this one as well because I'm going to be wetting the fabric and adding some color that is going to likely seep through certainly the middle there and we don't want to affect other pages at the moment so this one I'm just going to try and keep out of the way for now if any colour seeps through this part, I'll work with that when I come to work on that page. So really I'm just going to wet this one and I'm going to wet all the texture paste and the fabric that's there. Now the paste is almost dry, it's certainly got that skin on it so it's all virtually there. The first one I'm using is a mustard seed um, distress spray stain. This works beautifully on fabric. And rather than a full spray, I'm just kind of doing some tiny little splatters in most areas just to add that kind of mottled look so it's not a full on coverage there. I'm going to do a little bit of salvage patina just in a couple of areas, really not too much of that at all. Be sure to be mopping up where you can because of course that liquid will soon run and this is where I'm going to add my accent colour so it's going to be um, the Uncharted Mariner my all-time favourite absolute favourite colour in the Distress range um, but for this one I'm actually going to apply it with a paintbrush because I want to be really careful about where I put it so I'm going to take the lid off and place that on a piece of kitchen towel so I don't spill it. And essentially all of this texture paste here is going to be this beautiful blue. So when you start applying colour to the texture paste, you really will see that all of that texture coming through. Now I think I'm actually going to not quite do this all the way to the edge. I quite like, I think I like that yellow peeking through in some areas and then I'm going to do a little bit over here, a little bit at the top as well and some perhaps down here. Here I'm just brushing over the raised areas and really letting that just find its own way. I might do some of the fabric there. Okay, first thing to do now, well, excess on my brush is going to be splattered because why not put that onto the kitchen towel and put the lid back on my bottle super important and I'm going to spritz this round here with some water and allow that to just all start blending together and then again over here this one I might put some more on it's not as dark as I hoped it would be um, so I'll give that I'll probably dry that off again use the heat tool warm that up um, and then I might add, like I say, some more and hopefully that will deepen that colour. I really like that the darker colour is coming out from under the texture paste and seeping gradually through the fabric. But I definitely do want this area much darker. So I'm just going to wipe the lid of this because there's quite a lot of ink, as you can see, sitting in the lid. I've already got messy fingers, but I don't need more so. And I'm going to spritz this directly in here at that absolutely beautiful and a little over here now fingers crossed if I dry that off those two off that will stay nice and deep and dark this time okay for the moment that is pretty nicely uh, dried off now I think I'm going to start looking at ephemera I'll keep my colors to the side in case I decide to add a little bit more here and there um, but for now I think looking at the butterflies is going to be the next stage so which butterfly would I like to use and what colours can I pull from that now I've got this brown one here now the butterfly will be cut off at the edge um, that one kind of it fades into the background a little mind you so does that one that's 
quite pretty though. So I'm just going to try each of these out and decide which one. That's a bit too solid. I quite like that one. I'm wondering if I can alter the colours at all. Maybe, perhaps. Well, these are quite pretty as well, but they are too solid. They will be seen. I'm thinking the first one was actually the one that's the closest to what I'm going for. So maybe that there, we've got blues in it already. We could bring in a bit more of the brown to other areas perhaps, and that would tie everything in. So I think I'm going to go with that one. Let's put these away. And then I've got a lot of ephemera. Now some of my favorite to use at the moment, which was really, really inexpensive, and I really love it, are these postage stamps. And these come in all different colors. Um, which is just absolutely brilliant. Again, this was an eBay purchase. So if I can get into them and just open some up, let's put the page to the side there. I think I'll probably end up putting something over the body of the butterfly as well. I'll give it another layer. So we need, we definitely need sort of mustard colours and we don't have to use the entire stamp either. We can just use, so small ones like this are perfect. So mustard, blues and the white. See that is, it's lovely. It's got a hint of red in it though. I'm not sure about the red. So I'll just work through. There, see there's a lovely brown. That will echo the butterfly colours perfectly up here. So I think I'll definitely keep that one in mind. Maybe, maybe that gold. So I'll put my maybes aside first. Again, there's some more browns and then I'll come back and I'll sort of finalise which ones I really want to use. Other ephemera I have, uh, again from Tim Holtz, I have these uh, gauge dials and actually that top one is looking pretty good. The colours that are in the butterfly actually works. They're kind of browns there. So I'll just pull that one out. I don't think I need to go through all of those. I also have these, and now these are brilliant because they are just snippets. They are just little number strips that are in all different colours, fonts. I just think these are great. They don't mean anything, um, but there's some brilliant, so for example, we could just, just have that number sitting there for no reason. Um, figure, figure 110 could be, you know, so I'll definitely be bringing some of these up. These will probably be towards the end. So let's get those stamps down first. And of course, the gauge dial. With these, I tend not to use the whole thing. I tend to actually cut them up and I won't be cutting them in half exactly. More like three, two thirds. So in thirds here. So I think that could sit perhaps something like that. And then this part can definitely come over here. So let's take these stamps away for now. I could take the butterfly away, to be honest. And we're just building up these edges. So there's a stamp under there. So we can still have the yellow up there. And then the butterfly like so. Okay, so I think for the moment I'm actually happy with that. I'm going to put those down and then um, see where we're at after that. I think we need to bring in some darker colours around the edge, some blacks and some shadows after gluing these down. Now when it comes to gluing onto an art journal page, you can of course use hot glue, that's perfect. I like to use Kalal, that will work as well. You can use your uh, regular wet glues, but they take a lot longer to hold. Any glue is pretty much going to take longer to hold on the fabric than it would if you were gluing it onto paper. So just bear that in mind. I think I'm going to use quite a small amount of the stamps over this side. I want that blue to still show through a fair amount. So I've trimmed all the edges off, the glue has pretty much taken, although it's not dry, it's now holding everything down pretty well so I can carry on. I'm just checking my transparency here, my butterfly, and I'm still happy with the colourings, um, but I definitely need to bring some of this much darker black, I think, round to the edges to make it look a bit more grungy, give it a vignette. And I'm going to do that, I'm going to come back in again with a black spray 
Now, one of my favourite ones, because it is really, really deep, dark black, is the Dilusions in black marble. So with this, what I'm going to do is lift up the nozzle there, and I'm going to run this along the very edges. And I'm just going to let the actual ink soak into the fabric around the edges where I can. And I'll probably just do one edge at a time. But this is going to be all the way down, so over the texture paste, over the stamps as well. So you can just see it went into the stamps there. Over the gauge dial as well. And then down the bottom here. So there's one side. Let's just make sure there's lots, particularly in the corners. Okay. And then I'm going to take my water spray and just give this a spritz to just allow some of that to start soaking in, as you can see there. I think I need a bit more up here, up the top here. So if you need to get a paintbrush and you'd rather do it with that, then of course do it that way. And just make sure it's nice and deep. I've got texture paste on the edge here that is kind of resisting it. So that's fine. I've got a pencil that I can go in with that in a little while. So I'm going to do this again around the bottom and this edge and then the top, being very careful of this fabric here. Now, I do love what we've got so far here, but I feel like we need some pops of lovely bright yellow or orange in there just a little bit so I'm going to use a stencil and I'm going to mix up a little bit of texture paste now this texture paste is going to be orangey yellow color and this is using the creative craft products watercolor inks this I think this one might be in the brights range I'm not sure if it's brights or if it's in the uh, urban colors but either way they're all available on craft stash and they'll be linked in the craft stash link down below I'm going to use a little bit of the same texture paste as I did before and I don't need a huge amount this isn't going to be a massive lot and it will thin out with the ink as well so then it will spread a little bit further so just let's start with two drops of the ink mix that in now this is orange but it does really lighten up with the texture paste so start mixing, quite like that orange actually, although I might add a touch of maybe, maybe add a touch of brown to it, or I might actually, see that's quite, it's quite liquid at the minute, I don't want it to go too liquid, I might add a touch of yellow from the mustard seed in there as well, and see what colour that comes to. I love this experimenting with the colours and the textures, making my own mediums. There we go, that to me that's a much better colour, much more like the sort of yellow that I was hoping for. Okay, so coming to my page and I've got a stencil, this is, I believe it is a creative, oh no, this might actually be a Sheena stencil and I'm just going to place that over my stamps. This is going to help to tie the stamps into the background. So I'm going to hold this really taut on my fabric, everything nice and tight and flat. And I'm going to go over here, more so on the edge and fading out into the middle. Lift that up carefully so we've got that splash of colour. Now that's probably a little bit too much for me. I think I've done a bit too much there. So what I'm going to do is quickly take this while it's wet. I'm just going to take that away so I can easily do that. I'm going to add some contrast and shadows, so I'm not worried at the minute too much. And I'm just going to do the same again, but much, much smaller, much less. Much better, much better, just a small amount there. The same down here, just a really tiny amount. Try and make sure that's nice and taut to the edge, certainly over the stamps. There we go, so a little bit of texture. I don't think I want any more than that. So this, I can allow this to dry and I can go and wash this off later or I can go and wash it off straight away if I prefer. Let's just put that to the side along with the stencil. 
Again, I'm going to whiz this dry a little bit, I'm holding the fabric up where I can and letting the air flow around it as much as possible because I want to add a pencil to this next to really bring out the shadows of those stamps so that they pop a little bit more. And I've found the best way to do that is with a Distress watercolour pencil. Um, let me show you on this stamp up here. So this yellow one, I'm just going to run the watercolour pencil along the edge and the bottom where I can. The same with this stamp up here. I usually stick to the bottom edge and the side more than the top. Okay, so I've drawn around those. Then I take myself a watercolour paint brush, which is one just here. So it's got water in the barrel already. And I just will make sure that those bristles have got some water in, first of all. There we go and just dissolve that crayon a little bit. You'll see it will deepen in colour and then I can kind of smudge it around and underneath the stamp a little and it really helps to give a drop shadow effect and make the stamps and any other embellishments that you've got there really stand out. Then with clean water I tend to just try to fade that out a little bit as well so it's not so stark so it's more of a muted shadow than anything it's like harsh black line but you can definitely see the difference there so I'm going to come over and do that to this side too now to me that butterfly sitting there I feel like it needs a bit of contrast underneath it okay and that would be white or something very light in color so I'm just looking at a nice bright white dial um, and just see whether that makes much of a difference. I think it does. I think it does. Okay, so let's have a look through these and decide on one that will work nicely. So obviously you don't want bright, bright white because we don't have any bright white on here, but I just think something we could even go. It doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to be that. It could even be a tag. So I've got some tags here. This might be quite nice. So just a small one, a white tag like so, and I could have some string on top. Now that, if I obviously add a little bit of colour to the tag, but not too much, so it's still quite white, that would really help that butterfly, or yeah, butterfly, to stand out a little bit more. So I'm thinking, it's already got some marks on it, I'm thinking go round it in the blue, maybe add a little bit of blue smooshing I think let's have a go let's pop that to the side let's just run the edge of the nozzle around here just the tiniest little bit I want to keep the majority of this white if I can so like so there's obviously a splat of blue and a fingerprint in it and all sorts you get that when you're working with mixed media there we go Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to just dry this off quickly before that colour travels any further. I don't think we need, as I love the metal and I could use that. I don't think we need it. Now I'm wondering if I can find a few cogs and gears that will work on this. Oh, I do like this. I do like this. So this is a um, calligraphy nib, a dip pen nib. I don't know if I've got any others in here. I think they'll all be silver, but I think that will sit really nicely on there, on the butterfly body. Okay, so let's just do a tiny bit of stamping on this. Now this stamping, I think I'm going to do it in, let's do it in a, an orangey brown colour. I don't really want to go with black. It's just a text stamp. Uh, experience is not what happens to you, it's what you, what you do with what happens to you. Um, the wording is kind of irrelevant really, I just want a little bit of text as you can see on there. Perfect, okay, so that's going to go there, that there. I'll probably put my get my hot glue gun going in a moment. And then perhaps just here I've got some cogs and gears. This is, for me, this is like the really fun part of art journaling is working out all the finishing touches so let's bring the page in so far sorry about the glare on there but I'll show you without that in a moment have to have my bright lights on of course so 
So cogs and gears. I'm thinking up here, perhaps a couple that nicely match. Now we have got the silver, so we kind of need to bring the silver in. This is a lovely, lovely one, but I think that would be overshadowed a little. So perhaps again, one down here, a little bit of a silver one here. And let's see. Perhaps a little, just a tiny bit over the tag, over and under the tag too. Okay, all right, okay, so what I think I'm going to do is those last bits that I've done so far, I'm just going to um, adhere those down. That white is really bright at the moment. That might change. I may well adapt that, but I still have all of my number strips to place over the top, so that might just help to lighten things up if I use the right ones, we shall see. Um, it may be that I end up just slightly colorizing this a tiny bit with a little bit of something like antique linen distress ink but I'll get these glued down and we'll see where we go from there. Okay so in that interim I decided not to put the tag on. I actually removed the tag to glue it, I laid the butterfly down first by accident and I thought Do you know what actually I really like the way that's fading into the background. I'm going to have a sentiment on this, there's probably going to be bright white so that will stand out and work. So I'm going to put this aside, it's still a tag and I've got my off cuts of stamps as well, they're all going to be put in my ephemera box. So the last thing I need to do is just add some sentiments. Now I love these as I said earlier, um, there's a couple in here so just for example, just, just that, it's just a word, it doesn't mean anything, I'm going to place some of these over everything so and under the butterfly as well so there's one um make sure they're all bigger bigger something or other put that underneath there then have one at the top here this is one half fair baggage punch so some sort of travel ticket that one can be um, just vertical coming from the top there and definitely something of course over here so I don't know maybe this number 558 as I say really doesn't mean anything I'll snip the edge off of that I think there we go so turn my glue gun off let's just find my little orange scissors or these ones, I'm not sure where my orange ones have gone. You'll find them because they're my fussy cutting ones. Snip the edge off of that. Take my trusty Distress Ink Black Soot brush and just brush into the edges of these. Just to darken particularly this edge here, but just to make them not quite so bright. And the last thing we need to do now is just add a sentiment. So hopefully you can still see that actually in this area underneath, I've kept most of it clear of too much. It hasn't built up too much. Um, the sentiment, I'm going to use one of my small talk. These are snarky words, snarky words and phrases. I just think that they are brilliant. It doesn't have to be anything too big. Um, and where am I going to put it on here? So usually I would head out sort of over here somewhere. Uh, might have to be this side to be honest. Um, let's have a look, quick look. I'm going to go with white, I think that will pop. Whereas the black, as you can see, will really sort of fade in. Although it will, the black will match. Uh, I mean, I am fabulous. Maybe that will work, just I am fabulous. So let's get my tweezers. I will also trim this down a little. So just peel this off I don't really want to make the rest of them mucky with my fingers that's fine there's my scissors trim this down one to take those edges off and let's see where is this I think over there I think actually incorporated just there like so. Oh, I haven't trimmed 
the butterfly wing down. It's actually quite important. It helps to bring everything together. Like so. Okay. Do you know what? A couple of, pro I'll probably take this to my sewing machine at some point and stitch a few of these edges that I can fit into the sewing machine whilst in the book. But that is my art journal page. Let me just adjust the focus for you and bring this up much closer. So here we go. That sticker hasn't got any additional glue on it at the moment. Uh, it's a little bit on the skew, so I may want to um, just remove that to stick that on a bit straighter. But hopefully you can see those postmarks didn't stump too badly considering it's on the fabric. I think my nails and my hands came off worse from this project. Um, I really like that this yellow matches. It just works, doesn't it? One thing I'm half considering this lovely bright yellow here is a little spray down in this corner, but I'm not going to do it just yet. I'll give that a couple of days to just look at it and decide. Um, but I'm really happy with that. I am definitely happy with that. I love how it all came together. It's much darker and grungier than I thought it would be, considering it started off as a pale cream hopefully you can see that underneath so you can see the amount of ink that did soak through and that's why we had the metal shim in between any sort of plastic between would work um, obviously the next page is perfectly clean for me to work on and let's just check this one yes that's absolutely fine so there's some ideas for you if you enjoy art journaling if you want a slightly different take on it using the fabric book any questions please do let me know in the comments will you try something like this is this your sort of style or do you just enjoy watching it take care everybody i hope to do another video like this again very soon bye bye